be advised. If the opinions and views of the hosts and guests do not reflect those of the station. Everything we listen to, everything we watch, everything we read, everything we wear. Behind all our favorite things, there is an author, an artist, an inventor. Genuine, real, original. Pushing the limits of imagination and innovation for our comfort, our enjoyment. Making life interesting. Enjoy their efforts. Respect them. They help shape our world. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome on Intellectual Property. I'm your host, Attorney Sarah Jane Sugitan. Today, we're celebrating the World Intellectual Property Day, the 11th World IP Day. And uh, behind me is the poster from the World Intellectual Property Organization. And the uh, theme is Designing the Future. Now, what does the future hold when it comes to intellectual property for the country? Hopefully, it would be piracy-free, all original, or uh, the minimum very, very, very low incidence of piracy. Tonight, we have as our guest the Executive Director of the Optical Media Board, which is, of course, media famous for the raids that it conducts. But more than that, the Optical Media Board will be discussed to us by Attorney Cyrus Paul S. Valenzuela. Good evening, Attorney Cyrus. Good evening, Attorney Sarah. Yes, uh, well, uh, congratulations on your efforts, your intense Justified efforts you. in eliminating piracy or at least making the Philippines piracy free. Well, <laughs> it was correct? a team effort, yes. It is a team effort. Yes. and uh, Not well, just the OMB but other uh, law enforcement agencies as well, as well as agencies related to the protection of intellectual property. Mm -hmm. How long has the Optical Media Board uh, been around? The Optical Media Act was enacted 2003. Mm -hmm. So, uh, ever since then, uh, it's a specialized agency that regulates uh, the transfer of information in optical media and magnetic media format. So mm -hmm. Optical media meaning yeah. mostly CDs? CDs, DVDs, DVDs, console games, software. Console games. Yes, so even, e even uh, books on CDs. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, you're always on the news about, well, raids and uh, mm -hmm. enforcement activities. And so far, malaki na po ba yung confiscation natin for this year, for 2011? Well, right now, uh, we seem to be on track. Uh, we have uh, certain uh, targets that we wish to accomplish per month. And uh, so far, we've been meeting them. Uh, of course, we always uh, want to do more. Mm -hmm. Ano uh, ba yung mga targets na yan, for example? For example, uh, the number of uh, inspection orders served, the number of uh, administrative cases uh, that had been filed, criminal cases that had been filed, uh, and also in terms of confiscations, mm -hmm. Confiscation. number or the amount of uh, confiscated goods that had been uh, seized. Mm -hmm. Attorney Sirs, can you walk us through, for example, the police functions of the OMB? How do you go about conducting raids? I mean, what is your basis for uh, selecting a particular business establishment, an area, and then how do you go about it? Uh, under Republic Act 9239 or the Optical Media Act of 2003, the OMB is granted visitorial powers, which means the OMB can conduct an inspection on any business establishment, including economic zones, those inside the economic zones, at any time of the day or night without prior notice. Ah, so without warning, you can just go into a yes. business establishment? To, and what do you check when you visit this Well, usually we conduct a routine inspection to make sure that no violation is taking place. Uh, commercial establishments are not just by the OMB, but are regulated by other uh, government agencies as well. So uh, they can be subject to inspections and refusal to Refusal to be inspected uh, is considered to be a criminal offense ah, so under offense Republic Act 2239. Oh, for yes. example, I'm an internet cafe owner, mm -hmm. and then, well, you can visit me anytime without prior notice, yes. as you said. And uh, when you do come into a business establishment, what do you usually check? Uh, First thing we check is if their computers has the sticker. Uh, if you buy legitimate software, for example, there is a certificate of authenticity a sticker that comes with the software and it is stated in the end user's license agreement 
this is the the sort of like the contract you have to agree to mm -hmm. before you can uh, upload the, the the program in your computer mm -hmm. you have to check agree <laughs> sometimes you don't <laughs> like read that because it's very long mm -hmm. but uh, what's included there is it states that you have to put that sticker on your computer mm -hmm. so that's the first thing we look at if it has a sticker and then we check the actual uh, softwares that is software or softwares that are being used and oh, so you check the computers put like yes we you, check the computers you, know, you log on and yes. <laughs> you check the computers and then what we do is we we have uh, we have a website we go to and instantly we can have that verified mm. by when? any software developer like microsoft adobe or photoshop mm. so when you check a business establishment po, you do you have these experts with you or i mean marami po ba kayo nag inspection uh, sometimes we have representatives from the software developer we invite them to uh, go with us during the inspections so that they can uh, they can uh, help us determine the authenticity Mm -hmm. of the softwares that are being used but other than that our agents at the OMB undergo seminars with the soft with these software developers mm -hmm. uh, in order for them to gain the technical know-how in determining which are mm -hmm. uh, counterfeit which are not or which which uh, businesses are misusing the terms of their licenses mm -hmm. uh, so uh, while well, they are highly trained and uh, well, as you said, they undergo trainings mm -hmm. under different software developers. Yes. So mm -hmm. included po dyan yung mga like the game developers, as you said earlier, or mostly software, like software, business licensed software? Mostly business licensed. Mm -hmm. the, the problem with um, some mga games, they do not have a uh, representative here. So you need it, you need yes. it in order to enforce? We haven't conducted any seminars, but we do. Uh, we, 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 we can determine whether or not uh, the, the game that is being used is genuine or not. It's just that uh, it would be better for the, the, the software developer if they would have representatives here. Mm -hmm. So far, uh, game developers, they do not have well, any representation. representations here. And when we say representation, we mean the intellectual property owner? Sort of like a society. Uh, uh, we have the Business Software Alliance. And the Business Software Alliance, uh, they represent a number of uh, software developers, which includes Microsoft, mm -hmm. uh, Adobe, yeah, Photoshop. Yeah, business and, software. Yep. Okay, so uh, when you uh, conduct, of course, the mm -hmm. inspection, visit, visitorial, when you enforce your visitorial power, and uh, for example, I'm an internet cafe owner, mm -hmm. I, uh, you record multiple violations, for example, uh, on my computers, one well, a certificate of authenticity, mm -hmm. and then some software, nung tinest ninyo, are, ano, are not authorized or not legitimate. Ano po yung mga sanctions or what can happen to the business after well, that? Basically, we can seize the computers. So you take the like the hardware. Yes, we we take the the the, the, mo the monitors and the the CPUs, but uh, usually we take samples only because we seize them for purposes of uh, case buildups or using it as an evidence against them. So we need not take the entire. The, uh, uh, internet cafe. The, the yeah. internet cafe. I mean, all the units inside the internet cafe. And what we do is we leave an inspection order. And in that inspection order, uh, it is stated uh, the things that we have seized, mm -hmm. and we make the owners receive it. Mm -hmm. So, may inventory, pa rin yes, po. Yes, there, there is an inventory, and even in, in that uh, inspection order, you have a notice of violation, mm -hmm. and it states that you need to reply within five days. Mm. So, so may reply, and then from receipt of that inspection order. Uh, so, uh, during that period that you're requiring the business establishment owner to reply, mm. pwede po ba silang mag-legitimize, for example, ng software nila? Definitely. Or? Definitely. Definitely. Uh, we would like to uh, make the business owners aware, especially mga internet cafes. We are not here to harass them <laughs> or to to stifle yeah. legitimate business enterprises. We just want to. We just want to create a level playing field wherein lahat sila pantay-pantay, mm -hmm. lahat nagbe-benefit. Mm -hmm. uh, and walang nang, walang nakakalamang. Oo nga kasi it, for the business establishments who use legitimate software, of course, they pay they pay a higher price. Especially the with the original. internet cafes, those using uh, counterfeit softwares, uh, they can charge of uh, they can charge lower rental fees because mm -hmm. mababa yung cost. Yung cost 
cost nilong mm -hmm. capitalization. Yeah, that's, so nila. that's unfair. And that's unfair to those who are using legitimate software. Dahil lo sabihin nila, in order to compete, mm -hmm. we will just use the pirated ones. And mm -hmm. that's not the kind of mentality we want to promote. What we want to show the legitimate uh, software users is that tama yung ginagawa nyo and in, since we will be enforcing against those na hindi gumagawa nung katulad nung ginagawa nila. Mm -hmm. So after the five-day um, notice rule, mm -hmm. uh, and for example, they comply, they indeed legitimize their software, uh, does the case end there, the inspection ends there? Wala na pong mangyayari. Sometimes we just give them a slap on the wrist, mm -hmm. reprimand, uh, other times they would ask us if they can be given a grace period within which to comply, and most of the time we grant them, depending on the gravity of the offense. Sometimes kasi parang ilang years ka na, ang dami mong franchises, and all of your computers are not using legitimate softwares. Medyo, uh, sometimes we follow through with filing a case. Filing a case, mm -hmm. okay. Pero uh, in the many raids that you have conducted, meron naman po bang nakakapasa sa inyong mga... Definitely. Sa, uh, right now kasi the... the in terms of software piracy, it is 69%. The Philippines is, a, is at a 69% uh, uh, compliance. No, 69% in, uh, in violation. So, okay, so the piracy rate is 69%. So, 69% high, 69% of all the computers in the country are using pirated, pirated software. software. Mm -hmm. Pero, uh, do you think that's born out of ignorance or uh, in no access it, to legitimate I software? I think it's more on uh, economic uh, economic needs or lack of resources. It's still a price uh, Yes, because people would like to have access to computers, would like to have access to the internet, but then again, a lot of them cannot afford legitimate softwares. Uh, however, uh, I believe uh, last last July or no last year mm -hmm. yes July last year Microsoft had a program wherein they special it was a special price for internet cafes wow. they gave uh, like very cheap softwares mm -hmm. for a limited period for a limited of time. period yes oh, but that's good because at least it allows those who to legitimize yeah, yes. to legitimize and to be able to afford yeah. sometimes uh, what software. we do is actually because most of the time when we conduct the inspections a lot of them would say that when i bought the computer it already had softwares built in, in built yes. in so uh, we would like to inform them that that is not legal mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we have conducted raids against um, businesses selling uh, or establishments selling uh, selling computer units no. with built-in pirated, uh, pirated software. software we have actually arrested a couple of individuals who had offered mm -hmm. to put in mm -hmm. certain softwares because sometimes if you buy the computer they would ask you uh, sir I have a list of programs here would you like me to put it for a fee mm -hmm. put it in for a fee so sometimes we conduct by bust operations against mm -hmm. uh, people doing uh, that it's called hard 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 disk hard uh, disk. Uh, how do you call this I forgot the term. It's pre-installed. Yes, pre But the pre-installed pre software is... Yes. Uh, hindi siya trial. That's different from the trial uh, software, no? The trial software is different. Sometimes, uh, you can they can get it for free in the internet. Mm -hmm. Other times, meron kasi mga open source. Mm -hmm. So, sometimes we conduct... Before we conduct the actual inspection, for example, we suspect a uh, certain business uh, is using counterfeit softwares. We confirm it with the software developer already because you have to understand the software developers, they only have a limited number of distributors here in the country. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you're talking about a uh, computer school and you know they have a lot of computers. We call the developer and ask them, um, is this computer school, has this computer school purchased mm -hmm. any softwares from you ever since it started? And they would uh, they would check with their distributors and if they see that they haven't bought anything then there is a we you know it forms a, a reasonable doubt uh, I mean it forms a presumption that they they might be uh -huh. using a uh, pirated software so we conduct the inspections but sometimes uh, they might be using open source mm. software these are the programs that are being offered free
for free. Yes. Oh. Mm. So that's how you conduct a background check. And at uh, meron po bang din uh, nagsusumbong sa inyo like can you inspect this particular business establishment? I mean, yes, have, we have complaints have and complaints. we are obligated to, to act to act on, on the complaints. complaints. Yes. Do you have a hotline for example if uh, is that how you kubaga gather tips or at least uh, get information from the general public. Yes, uh, they can visit our website, uh, omb.gov.ph. Mm -hmm. eh, nandun yung hotline numbers namin. Eh, nandun din yung per, per office. They can get in touch with the chairman's office, my office, the office of the uh, licensing, mm -hmm. and even the office ng legal and uh, the enforcement. Mm -hmm. The Optical Media Board is, um, well, Manila-based principally, and uh, you've conducted raids uh, in business establishments in Metro yes. Manila. How about uh, nationwide? Do you also well, go Our around? jurisdiction is nationwide, mm -hmm. but uh, under uh, even under the law, we are, uh, we are tasked to uh, establish regional offices. However, uh, resources uh, does not permit us <laughs> to establish such offices yet. Uh, so but definitely you'll be in that you'll, you're in that direction establishing yes, regional yes. offices. Definitely, that's one of our uh, plans. But right now, what we do is we get in touch with the local PNP or the local NBI mm -hmm. or uh, the local government units, and we actually uh, ask them to assist us in the provinces. But in terms of NCR, it's usually uh, mm -hmm. our agents at the office because we can travel by land. So it's so if it's an NCR operation, most of the time it would be us, augmented by uh, elements of other law enforcement agencies. So talagang cooperation pa rin po yung, I mean, yung, the way you carry out your functions and duties is still yes, a it's, concerted it's effort. Yes, it's an interagency. still an interagency. Yes, interagency yeah. cooperation. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do you think, uh, is piracy an unsolvable crime? Or can we, uh, right now we are in the priority watch list. And uh, it's in fact No, we are in the regular watch list. In the regular watch, watch list. list. Yes. Oh, okay, so before it's a pr we were in the we priority. used to be in the priority watch the, list. Okay, now we have been demoted. Which we is were a good thing. we were there with China and <laughs> oh, yeah, the major and uh, Russia uh, okay. and and now we are in the regular watch list. Regular so watch list. Hopefully, we can have ourselves removed entirely from the watch list. But you have to understand, even countries that are not on the watch list, they do have a piracy rate. Maybe low, but there's still piracy happening in their country. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, wa what countries po yung tinutukoy ninyo na? Well, ma the model I always use is Japan. Mm -hmm. they, oh, so they're still, they, you know, used, the DVDs? They, they uh, used to be in, uh, in the priority watch list back in the 80s. Now, they're like one of the top countries with a very low piracy rate. Mm -hmm. So it can happen. I mean, we it can, can happen to us. Definitely. We can learn from what they've done. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're studying what they've done in order to implement that. Yes, I, I believe we are. <laughs> <laughs> I believe we are. I, ha I had been sent there to, to a seminar mm -hmm. on how they conduct their... Uh, but how long did it take them to be removed from the watch list? This was in the 1980s? This was in the 80s, I think. It was so a period of years. like... No? Yeah, 10, yeah, so 15 years. Mm -hmm. And as they just got their act together and decided to, let's clean up our streets. of. Uh, they made it a policy of their state, mm -hmm. state that policy. Japan is uh, no pro-intellectual property. Mm -hmm. you know, they, there was a, a, a declaration from, from, their, uh, from their head, from the head of the state that, mm -hmm. you know, it is a policy of Bawal. Japan that we would again. eliminate piracy. Mm -hmm. So it can definitely happen here. Yes. We have political <laughs> will. I mean, as you said, it's a, all your uh, performance of your functions are a concerted cooperation. Yes, concerted efforts uh, by efforts. different government agencies. Yeah, so we can definitely succeed in removing the country from that watch list. And uh, hopefully, well, yes, mm -hmm, in the that next is the plan. <laughs> yes, that is the plan. The me medium or short term plan, maybe medium range. Medium range, medium probably, range. Yes. And by then you'll have regional offices nationwide <laughs> right now what we plan is to coordinate with the local DTI mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. we can maybe we can ask them to provide us with a little table <laughs> <laughs> so it's a good start okay yeah. so we'll have more about the optical media board and the state of piracy in the country when we return on intellectual property everything we listen to everything we watch everything we read everything we wear. Behind all our favorite things, there is an author, an artist, an inventor. 
genuine, real, original. Pushing the limits of imagination and innovation for our comfort, our enjoyment. Making life interesting. Enjoy their efforts. Respect them. They help shape our world. Everything we listen to, everything we watch, everything we read, everything we wear. Behind all our favorite things, there is an author, an artist, an inventor. Genuine, real, original. Pushing the limits of imagination and innovation for our comfort, our enjoyment. Making life interesting. Enjoy their efforts, respect them. They help shape our world. Hi everyone, welcome back on Intellectual Property. You're still with me, Attorney Sarah Jane Sugitan, and tonight we're celebrating the World Intellectual Property Day, the 11th so far with the theme, Designing the Future. The Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines has come up with a special section in the Philippine Star just to bring you more information about how to register your intellectual property, and that includes copyright, trademarks, and patents. Tonight here we have on the program, Attorney Cyrus Paul Valenzuela, the Executive Director of the Optic Media Board. Good evening again, Attorney Cyrus. Good evening, Sarah. Yeah. And so, uh, before the break, we were talking about the process of uh, your visitorial power, mm -hmm. how you go about inspecting business establishments, what do you look for, how do you check if they comply with uh, intellectual property, respect for intellectual property rights. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. First of all, uh, you have we have to have an inspection order, and the inspection order can only be signed by the chairman. Of the OMB. Yes, or in his absence, me. Uh, and then uh, the inspection, each, each establishment that is to be inspected would have to be given an inspection order. And in that inspection order, it states our power to inspect and it also uh, has a, a portion where they, the, the agents would have to inventory anything they confiscate from that establishment. So if they confiscate, for example, two units of computer, they have to specify it there with the serial number. With, uh, hindi pa ding arbitrary. Yes. Let's get this and leave exactly. that. Exactly. Uh -huh. And then uh, they would have to have the owner uh, sign a receiving copy. And that would be used as part of the evidence against that establishment or against the owner. Mm -hmm. So strict din po kayo dun sa mga nakakonfiscate nyo and dun sa personnel nyo who handle these yes, confiscated definitely. goods. Uh, sometimes... Uh, uh, meron kasing mga issues na natatamper yung mga seized items. We are very strict with that. Mm -hmm. We had, uh, we, we have some, may problem kasi minsan sa storage. Mm -hmm. The OMB, ha we do not have a very they have large... have a warehouse? Uh, not right now. What we do is we store it in our office. Ah, nasa office lang. Meron kaming malaking garage kasi sa mm -hmm. office. So. Yeah, but that's, I mean, that's a lot of, uh, well, confiscated goods. I mean, yes, but under the, under the law, we are mandated to uh, destroy mm -hmm. the seized items within a period of 30 days. And we only need to retain a representative, uh, representative uh, samples of the to be used. Days as evidence against the offenders. Mm -hmm. How do you, um, okay, when, and when in, terms, in terms of destruction, after 30 days, uh, ano pa po ibang conditions before you decide to destroy evidence? Well, first of all, we have to uh, file the necessary criminal or administrative case mm -hmm. against uh, those violating 9239. And once the case had been heard, administratively or in, in the criminal courts, what would happen is, at the administrative case, what we do is we issue uh, a forfeiture order stating that these goods had already been forfeited in favor of government. Of the state. Mm. So sometimes we don't necessarily destroy everything. What we do is, for example, if you're talking about computers, sometimes we get letters from universities or from other government agencies uh, asking if 
we are willing to donate, donate. Uh -oh. some of the Decided. seized items. And since these are already forfeited in favor of government, you have to understand it is not forfeited in favor of OMB. Mm -hmm. It is <laughs> forfeited in favor of the national government. So mm -hmm. uh, other, other uh, government agencies can actually request mm -hmm. if these can be used in their agencies. Mm -hmm. And but sometimes we, we do. Uh, donate some of these, especially to schools. Mm -hmm. Kung i reuse yes. ng government. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I'm, I mean, I think definitely uh, yung pong storage poses a problem uh, for our police uh, agencies. No? Kasi yes. if you, for example, raid an establishment, hindi lang naman, that's, I mean, it's doing business related mm -hmm. to computers. So, hindi lang po yan isa or dalawang computers inside a business establishment. So, just in case you raid one and then merong violations and you had to confiscate, it has, I'm, I'm sure marami kayong na ko confiscate na si seize and then mm -hmm. that you have to hold it for a certain period of time and uh, dapat mas malaki yung warehouse yes, they, they do pile up and they another problem up. is sometimes when we conduct the the enforcement uh, the longer we stay in an area the dang the more dangerous it gets for our agents mm. because yung mga nagbebenta yung, yung mga vendors they become emboldened na oh, Ang tagal na nila dito, baka makuha lahat, manggulo na lang tayo para umalis na. So, mm. as much as possible, we would like to come in, seize the necessary uh, offending uh, parapernalias, give them the inspection orders, and pull out. Mm. In an area. Other times, if we need to stay for a long period of time in a certain area, we ask as the assistance of the PNP or the NBI to provide us with Augmentation. Uh, augmentation, yes. meaning may additional personnel. Yes, uh, they are there for to assist us and to secure us. Mm -hmm. But we are still the lead agencies in terms of optical media. Mm -hmm. Have there been uh, instances in the past now when OMB personnel cannot be present in uh, an in, in a like um, inspection? Yun lang pong PNP natin and CIDG yung nagkakanda. yes, because the optical uh, because the optical media board has the power to uh, issue deputation orders. Mm -hmm. You can actually yeah. you can actually deputize mm -hmm. uh, local government heads and the the heads of the local government units and uh, uh, personnel from other law enforcement agencies. Uh, in fact, right now we have uh, depu uh, we have given depu deputation orders to uh, some members of the uh, IP Philippines. Ah, yes, with that. Yes. So property. they actually assist us in uh -huh. the conduct Kasi of the operations. Because you need some technical expertise when you inspect a particular business establishment. I mean, how can you tell if it's counterfeit software or not? I mean, same with the problem with goods, luxury mm -hmm. goods. Uh, sabi nga ng ibang stakeholders, minsan, copy ang copy na yung brand nila and the way their exactly. bags are made. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure it's the same case for software. For, for optical media, the if you it's very technical but if you can see the disk itself in the middle there is a SID code what we call a source identification code yung po ba yung number dun sa pinaka yes, inner yes may number yun circle. so that code may each replicating machine is assigned a code mm. so whenever we catch uh, or whenever we seize optical media we check the SID codes if there are no SID codes it is automatically in violation mm. If there is a SID code, we can actually trace from which replicating machine it came from. Wow. So if it does not come from any replicating machine that are registered with the OMB, mm -hmm. then we know that it is illegal. It is, illegal. it is counterfeit. The same time, if it comes, if if it had been, uh, if it had it had come from a replicating machine that had that is registered with the OMB then we can actually put them to task and to answer why they are reproducing counterfeit optical media. We can actually issue closure orders mm, ng business establishment. and issue fines. Yung yes. pong code na sinasabi nyo, who assigns that uh, replication? Uh, it is the IFPI, International Federation of Phonographic Industries. They are based in Singapore. And uh, you, do you have a database? Do you have a link up with this IFPI? Yes, we do. We coordinate with them. Mm -hmm. Uh, they even have forensic uh, forensic machines that can uh, trace because sometimes what what the counterfeiters what they would do is they would uh, scratch off the SID codes ah. so sometimes we would send it to IFPI and they can conduct forensics on it and still yeah. get the 
Oh, SIM code. They have, they, put to get, they have to put together the code again. Yes. <laughs> kung tinry na i-erase mm -hmm. nung ano, replicating, replicator. Is that the correct term? Yung party spots yes, that are licensed yes. to? Okay. So, ano po yung usually, um, who are the parties who are licensed to replicate? For example, the music industry, uh, software? No. Uh, legitimate, uh, they have, the, the licensed replicators, what happens is, for example, uh, you would have something or you have a movie or some songs you would like to have replicated. You need to go to a licensed replicator and have that uh, CD or your, your movie uh, mass produced. So what you do is you cannot go directly to them and have that replicated. You need to get the permission of the OMB first and then the OMB would issue a commercial replication permit. Before you can get that commercial replication permit, you have to submit certain documents proving that you have a right to replicate such and such. Mm -hmm. Now, once you are issued the commercial replicating per replication permit, you bring that CRP to the replicator and that's the only time they would replicate mm, your song or your movie for you. If they replicate something without you presenting a CRP, they may be held liable in violation of the law. Mm -hmm. So you're replicating, po, um, it, that's similar to personal burning of CDs and DVDs? Yes. Uh -huh. Actually, uh, even uh, establishments that offer burning services need to be uh, registered licensed. or licensed uh -huh. with the OMB. And it's the OMB that issues this uh, CR, CRP? CRP, this yes. Permit. Uh, for someone before you go to a replicator to have that burn, yes, to have exactly. that material burn. We had we, We've had cases wherein uh, we actually closed down uh, certain replicating uh, facilities because they, we found them to be in violation mm -hmm. of uh, producing uh, without, without the permit. The permit, yes. Uh, so, pag ano po violation din yun? I mean, kung, kung walang permit and then you replicate, that's definitely, uh, is that an offense or administrative violation? Lang? It is a criminal and administrative offense because the Republic Act 9239 is a special criminal law. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, how long po yung mga imposable fines and penalties? Well, the uh, penalties can, can go up all the way to 1.5 to 3 million pesos mm -hmm. and the penalties is uh, can go all the way up to six years maximum six, na imprisonment. imprisonment and have we uh, convicted anyone in particular in violation yes we had uh, we had a conviction two years ago but the problem was uh, he never challenged the conviction on the lower courts and he just applied for probation mm. so uh, for us it was uh, Although it was a mini success, mm -hmm. we never actually got to see anyone go to jail mm -hmm. Kasi because, no, because of the penalty. So that's one of the amendments we'd like to push for is to have the penalties increased. Mm -hmm. So, para merong deterrent effect. Yes, uh, definitely. Kumbaga, as you were saying during the break, uh, for example, in Japan, that's how they did it. They, yes, they uh, increased it to 10 years. 10 years mm -hmm. na, na imprisonment. And they actually put some people in custody for violation of, uh, well, for for piracy, yes, yes, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So, uh, during the, let's talk about other efforts of the Optical Media Board. Mm -hmm. uh, one of for uh, foremost also is the Metro Manila Film Fest. Yes, the uh, Film Fest. Po, well, well, that we was are, quite new. For uh, we are we are proud to say that for the past six years, mm -hmm. uh, we managed to uh, make sure that the entries during the Manila Film Fest are not being uh, pirated mm -hmm. or not being copied illegally. Uh, ano po ba yung grace period lang for the duration of the festival lang ba yan? Basically, or? what we would want is for the, ah, sorry, for the legitimate producers or for the, for the, uh, for the movie industry to, to have, uh, you know, to maximize mm -hmm. the profits from their intellectual creation. Of course, of course. Because what would happen is, if hindi pa nare-release, meron na una na dun sakali, wala nang manunood, hindi na sila kikita. And you have to understand, yung movie producers natin, yung local movie industry, ito lang yung market nila. Mm -hmm. unlike, unlike Hollywood films, worldwide yung market oh, nila. Oh, distribution. So, it's a bit of a protectionism. Mm -hmm. So, 
maliit na period lang naman yan during the MMFF Festival. That's nakatutok really talaga kami mm -hmm. sa mga sa pagprotect talaga ng mga entries. And that's every December for the past six years. For the past six years. Mm -hmm. so how do you prevent uh, movies like that from being pirated? I mean, do you secure the main reel or something? Well, first of all, uh, we uh, yung efforts namin, enforcement efforts namin, increased, we increase it during that period talaga. And yung agents namin, even during, because usually the film fest begins December 25. Yes, end of the year. So even yung Christmas breaks nila, they are required na magtrabaho police, oh, during the Christmas season. And at the same time, we also uh, get uh, intelligence, uh, intelligence reports regarding uh, certain individuals that are getting ready to release such and such. Uh, and we had had a number of uh, a number of raids of uh, establishments that we found were ready to sell to, to sell ito po mga yung mga Metro pirated Manila copies ng mga MMFF entries. entries. Yes. Okay, so kahit pala Christmas na go over time ang mga taga Optical Media Board to yes. protect the Filipino film industry. Attorney Cyrus, thank you for uh, joining us this evening and celebrating thank you for having me. World Intellectual Property Day. Would you like to invite our viewers to any future activities or uh, to visit the OMB website and cooperate with regards to your intellectual property efforts? Oh, definitely. Can uh, we can, you can check out our website, OMB dot uh, gov dot ph uh, you can also visit the PAPT website PAPT.org uh, and uh, any information you can provide us regarding any violation of the Optical Media Act or copyright violation please let us know and uh, we would act on it and at the same time don't buy pirated goods <laughs> <laughs> uh, legitimize your uh, softwares and um, let's all respect intellectual property all right, there you have it. Thank you again, Attorney Cyrus Thank Valenzuela, you. for joining us tonight. I've been, uh, well, I've been with you for the past four months, and uh, I'd like to thank, of course, the World Intellectual Property Organization for supporting this program of the Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines, uh, David Salon, the Optical Media Board, the National Committee on Intellectual Property Rights. Please do respect intellectual property. All of us are surrounded by it. You have a favorite movie, favorite song, favorite, uh, well, uh, brand, uh, clothes, bag, etc. These are intellectual property and we cannot just take it without paying for it properly, without uh, respecting the creators, the industries behind our favorite things. So uh, there you have it, the World Intellectual Property Day, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope you join me again next Friday for another edition of Intellectual Property. Everything we listen to, everything we watch, everything we read, everything we wear. Behind all our favorite things, there is an author, an artist, an inventor. Genuine, real, original. Pushing the limits of imagination and innovation for our comfort, our enjoyment. Making life interesting. Enjoy their efforts. Respect them. They help shape our world.